I was born in Waterloo, Iowa. I grew up in a very dysfunctional family. My mom and dad divorced before I turned two years old. My dad remarrying years later to my stepmom. My mom ended up remarrying also. I like to call my family a blended family because I have a lot of family all over the place. Lots and lots of family. I lived with my mom, stepdad, and sister for some of my early childhood years. I remember at a very young age moving around from town to town. We moved from Waterloo to Eldora, back to Waterloo, Cedar Falls, also Steamboat Rock. I was all over the place. I have some good memories as a child and I also have some bad. We had a lot of family time and, and fun doing regular family outings like camping and boating and fishing. We owned dirt bikes, motorcycles, boats, snowmobiles. During my childhood, there was a lot a little girl should never see. When I was living with my mom, my sister and I would witness my mom getting abused physically by my stepdad. My mom was a drug addict and I was exposed to the drug scene at a very early age. For as long as I can remember, I was at dope houses, around guns, a lot of partying. I was sexually abused for years starting at the age of four and this went on until I was eight or nine years old. When I finally had the courage to tell grandma about it, she told my dad and my dad and stepmom took me away from my mom. My mom didn't believe me and I was accused of being a liar and not telling the truth. Eventually my dad and stepmom went to the courts and had me go and testify to them what had been going on and I was removed from the home and was placed in my dad's care. Life at dad's was a little better. I wasn't getting sexually abused, but there was still drugs being used in the home. My stepbrother and I liked to fight a lot and could never get along no matter how hard we tried. There were a lot of times we would fight physically and we never got along. My sister and I were close and she looked up to me and always wanted to be just like me. There was a lot of fighting us kids seen happening with our parents, split ups, running to safe places in the middle of the night because our home may have not have been safe for us. I remember my dad and stepmom fight often and she would take us and hide out at campgrounds and so on. The time I lived with my dad wasn't always bad either. We would take we would, uh, he would take us on vacations to amusement parks, water parks, camping, fishing, riding snowmobiles and dirt bikes. Both my parents and step parents had very dysfunctional lifestyles and God was not the center of their lives. They worked to make ends meet and to raise us kids, but that was about it. I didn't see any healthy relationships growing up except for my grandparents. I was always very close with my grandparents on my mom's side. When mom would take me there as a child, I would hide so I could stay there longer behind the recliner. I didn't want to leave. It was the only place I felt safe and loved. They gave me attention and showed me a lot of love that I desperately needed. They would buy me clothes, toys, and feed me good home cooked meals. One day, life at dad's got very hectic. I couldn't take it anymore. I called grandpa and grandma to come and get me and I moved in with them. My grandparents were more like my real parents. They bought me clothes, toys, spoiled me just a little bit. They knew I had been living a rough life and they didn't want to see me suffer anymore. Around this time I was nine years old and had already attended four different elementary schools. Life was great at grandpa and grandma's. I didn't want or need for much except God wasn't in our heart our home during this time either. Grandpa worked on the road a lot and grandma stayed home to care for me. I never really seen my mom much during this time. She ended up getting a divorce from my sister's father and my sister moved with her grandparents. We were split apart and we lived 30 miles from each other. My mom was always in abusive relationships and doing drugs when I was growing up. When I lived with my grandparents, she would call me and tell me she was coming to see me and never show up. That hurt my feelings really bad, and I learned quickly that she would often promise to see me and not show up ever. After a while, 
I just got used to it. This made me miss her even more. No matter what, I, no matter what, I still loved my mom very much. Not knowing it at the time, but being separated from my sister was a good thing. My sister lived 30 miles away from me in Independence, Iowa. I was able to see her often because there was a church bus that we called the Barney bus that came and picked me up on Sundays for church. I was so grateful for that, that church bus because I got to spend time with my sister. Going to church reunited us and I was able to stay home, stay some Sundays late to hang out with her. She stayed at her grandparents' house and on Sundays we would have lunch and dinner and then do Sunday evenings and then they would take me home on the bus. I was being, it was good for me because I was being introduced to God, church, and love at the same time. I loved learning Bible verses and connecting with other kids who were learning about Jesus also. This planted the seed in me a long time ago about my Heavenly Father. There were times I would go and stay with my sister for a week at a time and then go to church camps. One day I came home from school. My grandparents were home early and my mom's car was sitting in the driveway. I knew something was happening and I knew that it couldn't be good. I walked into the house where they were all sitting down in the living room. I was told my mom was taking me home and I would no longer be living with grandpa and grandma. They didn't have the time to continue taking care of me. I knew this was a mistake and they should have left me where I was with my grandparents. At this point in my life, I was hurt, I was broken, I felt abandoned, and felt like no one wanted me. All I know is I was going back to my mom's and I knew it wasn't going to go well. I remember the day I left my grandparents like it was yesterday. I transferred to another school in fifth grade, makes five schools in elementary, maybe even two schools after leaving my grandparents. Living back with my mom, I had more freedom to run the streets, with friends, but that also meant I was hanging out a lot at the drug house that my mom couldn't seem to get away from. On the weekends, I was at the skating rink. This is where I started smoking cigarettes and hanging out with the wrong crowd. We weren't called the juvenile delinquents at the, of the skating rink for no reason. At the age of 12, I started smoking marijuana and I was hooked. Anyone wanna take a guess or I was introduced to it? Nope. It wasn't the skating rink or my friends. It was a drug house. I was 12 years old when I started staying the night with my boyfriend. I wasn't having any sexual relations at this time, but I still was laid up with boys. You may be wondering what happened to the relationship with my father and his wife. I went and visited sometimes, but I had a lot of freedom at my mom's and I loved that we were always on the go. My mom and I was like best friends. My dad's house was not what I liked going to because of my stepbrother. We constantly argued and would fight, and I was done with all that. I couldn't face him anymore. I would still go and see my sister sometimes that lived 30 miles away, but I was being defiant and acting way older than what I was. By the time I was 13, I was constantly partying, getting high, drinking alcohol, and smoking cigarettes. I got kicked out of two different middle schools for fighting and skipping class. My anger, attitude, and my addictions were starting to get out of control, and my life at this time was becoming very unmanageable. I had the worst attitude and did not care about anything but hanging out with my friends. I ended up being set, sent to um, the Educational Discipline Center, aka EDC. There I was introduced to more kids who were a lot like me, partying, having crappy attitudes, coming from dysfunctional backgrounds, and just doing what we wanted. My anger and rage got so bad that I would physically hurt my mom. I would say hurtful things to her. When I turned 16, I started driving, and I also started using meth. <coughs> First time I, I used was with my mom. I struggled in high school because of my party lifestyle and my addictions. I was becoming so addicted to meth that I started doing Adderall and Ritalin. I lived with my boyfriend and our house ended up becoming a party zone every weekend. 
The place we lived in had no running hot water, and I boiled water on the stovetop to take a bath. I also didn't have a washer or dryer. We ended up moving from this unsafe environment to Midway Inn on University. It, it wasn't that great, but it was better than no running water. My boyfriend and I had a physically abusive relationship. We ended up staying together off and on for about nine years and had one child together. During one of our breakups, I ended up pregnant again. Only this time, it was not his child. I was going through a lot at this time, living with my mother and stepfather, dealing with DHS, and living out of a basket for that matter. I was faced with making one of the hardest decisions in my life. My daughter was only six months old when I found out I was pregnant. I ended up giving my baby up for adoption. I gave birth and from there the baby was taken. I had so much hurt, guilt, and shame, but I knew I couldn't take care of another child. After the baby was placed up for adoption, I went back to using meth. I hated my life. It was a life of insanity, staying up for days on end, robbing people for money to get more drugs and to pay our rent. I was getting tired fast. Nine years of this horrible lifestyle and a very unhealthy and abusive relationship. My mom was raising my child while I was out running the streets and being an unfit mom. At the age of 22, and my daughter just two and a half years old, I got a call from my mom stating that she had stage four lung cancer. I lost it. I told myself I was done using meth. I had to be. There was no one who was going to be able to take care of my daughter besides myself. I watched my mom fight with cancer for eight long months. During this time, I realized God was reaching out to me. There was a man outside of Quickstar and he witnessed to me. He was a complete stranger, but he spoke life into me. God knows that is exactly what I needed to hear at that time in my life. After that conversation, I remembered all the times I went to church to see my sister and the Bible camps I went to when I was little. I knew God really did exist and that he loved me. It took everything I had to tell my mom I was done fighting, I was done robbing, I was done using drugs, and it was time for me to grow up and be a mom that I hadn't been. As she was laying on the bed at the hospice home, not even 10 minutes after I said this, I walked out of the room and my mom met her Heavenly Father. It killed me inside. I felt lonely, but most importantly, I let a man control my life and my relationships with people that I deeply loved. There was nothing I could do to get my mom back. I regretted not being there to help her while she needed me the most. After mom's funeral, I started hair school at College of Hair Design. This was one of my goals my mom knew I had, uh, I had been dreaming of. I was still living in a basket, bouncing around, living with different relatives, but at least I was going to school. This is when I met Shane, my husband. When we met, we knew we both needed love and we wanted God first in our relationship. We both came from very broken past and both had lost our parents tragically. We started hanging out and going to church. We were regular church attendees or tenders at Celebration Church and this is where we got married. He had his daughter and I had my daughter. Soon after we both graduated from college, God blessed us with the baby boy. We bought our very first home in Waverly, Iowa and joined Life Church. Today, I've been I today I have 9 years of being clean from drugs. Right. Mm -hmm. The Christ-centered 12-step program helped me uh, help me find freedom from my past hurts and helped me heal. <laughs> today, I serve in my church running the Kiosk program as a youth leader. And my husband and I cold, uh, co-lead Celebrate Recovery on Monday nights. The past two years, I have been going to N-Stay, which is kind of like Bible college. After going through Bible college, I knew I was called to ministry. God has sh sure showed me love and grace and my recovery. He has blessed me abundantly, and I am forever grateful for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I do want to share a verse with you. 
um, one of my favorite verses in the Bible. It's 2 Corinthians 4.18. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Amen. Thank Amen. you.